On a cold January day, Brian Holst sat down with Kevin Boss to discuss the hobby, their mutual interest in John Deere machines, and Kevin's upcoming auction. So we've talked about your, your John Deere passion. Now let's talk about your collection. Um, I know we have an auction coming up where a lot of the stuff is tractor and harvesting related. Let's go into a little bit about the harvesting side. How'd you get into that side? You know, the, the way I got into it was the original show that I got started going to was a smaller local show and they put oh, two or three acres of oats in for binding for the search machine and they decided they wanted to harvest part of that. So I had actually went to an auction and bought a pole type Massey clipper combine, first piece that started the whole problem and uh, took it to the show, enjoyed it, enjoyed people watching it operate. Mm -hmm. Probably more so than driving it. You know, I, I enjoy the look of people and, and the stories that you get of people of who had one or what it, how it functioned for them or how it didn't function for them. So that kind of got me started. After a year or two, uh, they kind of added some acreage. So pretty soon we was up to 10 acres to, to harvest and use at the show. I started trying to rely on other people to bring items for the show and found out that you know you can easily get yourself in a in a position of stuff not showing up and look mm -hmm. bad so i decided the best way to cure the problem was i'll just own everything myself so i just bought enough stuff to host the show without other people but if other people showed up my stuff could sit you know, okay. it didn't bother me not to use my stuff, but that way I was safeguarded. And that's kind of what got me started in collecting harvesting equipment. You know, and, and harvesting equipment's so mechanical. Very much so. You know, if you look at a tractor, they're mechanical more so than a disc or a plow, but you can only watch one do something so much, and then you've seen everything it can do. Where harvesting equipment is mesmerized, you know, it will mesmerize you by all the, the functions and the moving parts. Yep. Uh, so to see one in the field operating at that age, you know it took more work to make it happen. So it's, it's more of a success to your work. You know, you, you get more of a better feeling of success for your work if you actually have a harvesting equipment in the field working rather than, just, than a plow or a disc or some other piece of tillage equipment. Sure. Uh, like I said, originally I, I, I collected all brands of harvesting equipment uh, and it, it turned into be just too much. Uh, you know, if you, if you start taking 18 mounted corn pickers to a show and everyone's a different brand, and then you've got the combines self-propelled, you've got the pull type combines, it turns into an overwhelming project for an individual person. Uh, without a doubt. Without yes. A doubt. So I had to carve my, you know, my collection down quite a few years ago and I decided I would just collect solely deer just because of my closest to deer and company. Sure. So let's talk a little bit more about the items you have in your auction, Kevin. I know uh, there's a lot of videos on the catalog that we see a lot of the equipment moving, but you know, what can you tell me about you know, the tractors, the combines specifically, and most of the corn picker actually? You know, my sole purpose in most of this stuff was making it active again and uh, using it. Uh, so, you know, I always tell people when people call me and ask me the value of, you know, a combine, I said, well, the values, you know, greatly vary if you're talking about it sitting in the yard or in the field operating you know and anybody that's had a combine tried to make one operate that's that age it's realizes <clears throat> what i'm talking about not just financially but hours of time so what we tried to do uh was any of the stuff that that's uh functioning working which is most everything we tried to get videos mm -hmm. uh, of everything from just this past fall these aren't videos from five years ago or ten years ago but, you know, to me as a buyer, it would make a difference. You know, if I see this thing in the field and it, it was harvesting, you know, fall of 21, you know, I'm, I'm willing to take the risk and buy it because I know it's, you know, it's, it's not set, the motor isn't stuck, you know, the bearings and belts aren't all gone. Uh, it's currently being used. But you're, you're selling something that you would like to buy, not a I'm project. I'm trying to sell something I wouldn't mind owning. And, you know, I'm still a collector. So, you know, I tell people, I'm going to be going to shows and I'm still collecting yet, so I'm not trying to ditch any of this stuff on somebody just to bury it and get rid of it. I said, I, I'm, I'm trying to help implement somebody into the collection world or a usable item 
rather than just trying to get rid of stuff that you know that that I don't want to fix. Exactly. That says a lot about. So uh, honestly, if anybody's got questions on any of the equipment, I mean, they can call and I yeah. will tell them exactly what I know about it. And I'm I'm not gonna, like I said, I'm not trying to hide anything on my stuff because, you know, if I meet this guy next year, you know, I don't want to have to hide from him. Be sure to visit almondvintagepower.com to learn more about the Kevin Boss tractor and equipment auction ending on March 10th, 2022.